Hello, welcome back to my second bike talk. And we're going to be riding around the yard. Sorry, there's no other riding footage. Uh, I'm still recovering my vision. So until that's 100%, we'll be in my yard. This video, we're going to look at some of the features of the bike. I've uh, accessorized the bike, as you can see here. I have the GoPro camera strapped to my chest to give you a view from that angle. I kind of like it. I may do that um, when I'm out riding, who knows, or I may still be on the handlebar. I've started to accessorize the bike, put on a rear view mirror. The bike came with this mechanical bell. It's a little bit difficult to uh, make it stable, but I will. Then I got this G-mount. Again, I watch a lot of videos. And I wanted to be able to use my cell phone with the bike, so this is a unbelievably well-designed piece of equipment. And we'll see it in action shortly. I moved the GoPro mount over here to the right side because I wanted the phone here, and the GoPro would have been too busy on this side, at least in my view. I've adjusted the brakes. I've also uh, tried to make certain those handlebars are aligned and straight relative to the wheel. Watch the video on that. Um, so that's where we're at. I still enjoy the bike in my yard. My eye is not recovered enough for that to be something I'm going to be doing out on the street or on the trails. You may ask, if the GoPro's not on the handlebars, where is it? And we're going to say, the GoPro is mounted on my chest. I bought a accessory kit on Amazon for like 20 bucks. It has tons of mounting options for the GoPro. We're going to explore the LCD controller. You know, there's three buttons, up arrow, an M and a down arrow. You hold the M down for three seconds and the LCD comes on. I'm in a darkened shed, so that's going to make things easier to see. The up arrow changes the pedal assist level, and we have zero through five. The down arrow goes down, and you can go down to zero. If you hold the up arrow down, the front headlight comes on. Something that wasn't mentioned in the documentation, but was mentioned in the manual on this LCD display, and you'll see here uh, icon is on the LED. But no, no tail light, because I move the bike, that LCD light is sensitive. You can see how that LCD brightness changes. Two looks good. You hit the M button, the middle button, and it goes to the next one. And here, it's either in miles or kilometer. You can see how it changes. You hit the M button again to save any changes and to move on to the next one. So PO3 is the working voltage, and that's 48. PO4 is auto shutdown, which is uh, four minutes. So that's when the bike is stationary and you haven't used the M button to turn it off. PO5 is the pedal assist setting, which is now on one, which means pedal assist goes from zero through five. I set it to two. And as you can see, it got out of configuration mode. I set it to 2 because I wanted to see how 0 through 9 would work, which is what you get with 2. And the throttle was inconsistent. I didn't like the way that it worked at all. It didn't like that setting. So I went back to 1, which is 0 to 5. And there's also a 0 setting, which is 0 to 3. 6 is wheel diameter, which is 26 inches. When I first got it, that was 20 inches, and therefore the speedometer was off by 30%. I wish there was a way of staking in, in programming mode for longer. It 
Seven is speed monitoring. They say don't change it. I think some of these settings have to do with how many magnets are in the pedal assist. You know, eight is speed limit in kilometers. I got it set to 60. You can set it to 100 for max. A lot of people do that. PO9 is zero or non-zero boost. It's either zero or one. It's set at zero, meaning it's instant start. 10 is uh, how the power assist works. It's a setting through zero through two. Zero is pedal assist only. One is throttle only. And two is both, which is what I have it set at and what I'd like. 11 is uh, pedal assist sensitivity. They're saying don't change it. It's set to three. 12 is pedal assist strength. It goes from one to five and that's set at three. Again, the manual says don't change. Pedal assist 13 is how many magnets are in there. It's set at 12, which is the maximum value. Don't change it. This is maximum current. Not certain exactly what that means, but it's set at 13. 15 is a low voltage, which I'm assuming if it gets below 39 volts, maybe the controller shuts off the motor. 16 clears the odometer. 17 again is an NV range. 100 is a default. That's what it's set at. They say don't change. And 18 is what you use to reset the, the parameters back to their default. And then you go back to one. So hopefully that was interesting. Those of you that may have this bike and like to know how to work the LCD controller. Hold down the M button for three seconds. The LCD light comes on and it comes up with just speed and miles per hour and then the odometer. If you press M, you'll see that goes to time. Then it goes to something else. There's a trip odometer. There's the regular odometer. Don't know why it's still at zero. And there's the time. So there's, and that one on the crusher one, that could be the error thing, but there's no error, error ERR that should show up on the display. So that's how that works. If you hold the up arrow, and hit the M button. Well, supposedly if you hold down the M button and press the up arrow, it's supposed to change the speed, but of course I just turned it off. And it was doing that at one time. So it should do your regular speed and then it should have average speed, uh, max speed, but uh, for some reason, it's not changing, no matter what I try to do. There's max. Okay, you got to hold them down for a while. There's average, max, average, and then real speed. So you need to hold down the top button and the middle button for a couple of seconds before that starts changing. It's just getting used to these controls. You got three buttons that do a lot of different things. Hopefully you're enjoying using your bike. There are two apps which I uh, got for my iPhone. It's an iPhone 6 and both of them run. I do have uh, a challenge now. A lot of apps won't run on that old version of iOS, which is the latest one that can run on the 6, but eh, I'm not ready to upgrade. I saw Citizen Bike use it, and when I was watching the miles per hour on the phone versus the miles per hour on the speedometer on the bike, I noticed that the bike was much lower, and that's what prompted me to learn how to do programming so I could change the wheel size. So now the speedometers are pretty much in sync. They both they work on different things. So the speedometer in the phone uh, works on GPS coordinates, so you need to go a certain distance and then it calculates the time that you traveled that distance. Uh, the speedometer is a typical speed sensor somewhere on the bike on one of the wheels. And so that's a little bit more, um, it reacts a little bit more quickly than the 
miles per hour app on the phone. But the miles per hour app also gives you a lot of analysis and you can take a look at your trip and you know get max speeds and average speeds and all those other things that you can only display one of those uh, and it doesn't record them on the bike speedometer. The next app that I got was called GPS Track and I'll put a link if I can find it up in the description. So this app is an app that I got for basically hiking trails and I just learned about it uh, uh, less than a week ago. It's a great app. Here's uh, where it tracked my uh, driving around uh, the pool in the backyard. As you can see, it maps your travel over top of uh, satellite imagery, which I'm assuming comes from Google. And it also records a ton of information, so you can get altitude, so if you're climbing up a hill or going down a hill, or if you think that the path that you're on is flat, it'll tell you that, and it shows you that for the length of the trip. Uh, for both the MPH and the, and the Tracks app, you got to start your recordings, and then when you're done, save them and, and you give them a name, so when you look at them later, you know what they are. So those two apps I think will be extremely good as I continue to evaluate the bike and look at it and hopefully can uh, provide you with some videos of my explorations around the town. So that's the end of this video. Hopefully uh, you've enjoyed video number two and, and I am technical in my approach to um, items and uh, share them with you and I also like to dive in deep and understand how things work and there's a lot more on this bike that um, I'm not that aware of but hopefully over time I will be and if I feel it's uh, worth worthy of it I'll share with you so hopefully you're enjoying your mode of transportation uh, hopefully it's as green as you can be we're gonna say thank you for watching we're going to say bye until the next bike video.